The pond is crystal clear, but not much life in it yet. That won't happen until uh, June and July. But we have a lot of tadpoles. Well, it's 50 degrees out here and quite breezy. But at least we didn't get that uh, four to six inches of snow I was telling you about. The jet stream took it further south of us down to the where Michigan meets Indiana border. Yeah, that's okay, I didn't miss that one bit. Well, spring is arriving here in the woods. You can see the uh, leaves beginning to pop out. Pretty soon it'll be hard to see around here in the woods. When all the upper canopy of these trees comes into fruition. The good part is that uh, Monday, which is tomorrow, it's going to be uh, 70 degrees and then on Tuesday, 80 degrees. So looking forward to those warmer temperatures. But right now it's pretty chilly out and the wind doesn't help much. <laughs> but looking forward to what's coming. Hey, talking about what's coming, in today's video you're going to be, this is episode uh, 11, we're going to be taking a look at the six spotted fishing spiders mating behaviors which are can be unique to this particular species might be a couple other spiders that do something similar but i think you'll find it very interesting and fascinating and uh, and in the process of having shot some underwater pond shots um, I was trying to capture the six spotted fishing spider as it would be on a leaf and then as I approached would jump off into the water and then I didn't see it and I couldn't see it for quite a long time and I would leave rather than wait 15-20 minutes it may have taken for that spider to resurface again but I had this inquiring minds like to know moments and my my inquiring moment was where does that spider go when it jumps off that leaf they're good swimmers they swim underwater for a while until they feel safe and come back up or where do they go so for the life of me, I couldn't figure it out and I could not get a film of it underwater where they go when they jump off the leaf because I couldn't get set up in time uh, before the spider would take off when I'd startle it. So I decided to take my experiment home, which I did. Captured a uh, male and female, took them home to my house. So we only have a couple more episodes left and, um, and then we'll be going on to something other. So I appreciate you hanging in there with me with this long, documentary series, if you will, uh, capturing the fishing spiders. So thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day. Take care now. I think we got a fishing spider here on top of the water. It's going to be in the center of your screen. See if I can zoom in here a little bit. Should be right in the center. little ways out there so I can't get a great ID but I think it's some kind of a fishing spider I think I'm seeing the, the molting on the legs and it's deciding to move a little bit we'll see where it's going and what it's up to a six spotted fishing spider is diurnal meaning it hunts during the day or ops is still for hours on end, just like a real fisherman. This species of spider makes use of its very good vision when diving to catch its prey, as opposed to web spinning spiders, which use stimulation on the web to capture their prey. You can say the water's surface 
is the six-spotted fishing spider's web as it feels the vibration on the surface and under the surface of the water. This six-spotted fishing spider is on a mission. It's a male and it's in search of a female. When the female is mature and ready to mate, she will drop drag lines coated with pheromone laced silk. These drag lines can lead a male right to the female. Our boy has taken a break to relax a bit. See his two hind legs? They pull the leaf up to protect himself from the wind. He will lift up his abdomen. Just watch. There it goes. See how he curls the abdomen up in the air? This spider can use that as a sailboat. He can lift his sail or his abdomen, catch the wind, and sail quickly across the pond. This spider is the only spider known to use this procedure of sailing across the pond. Usually it's only the juveniles who use this procedure because the adults have learned it can be very dangerous with the wind taking you places you don't want to go. The male is only about half the size of the female, and this male has picked up the trail again and proceeds in search of the female. If the male loses the scented strand of silk, all is not lost, because the scent of the female is even strong upon the water's surface itself. This male is ready for action, and his pedipalps are holding the semen that he needs to impregnate the female. When a young male's fancy turns to love, he must proceed with caution, as they may be eaten if the female is sufficiently hungry and or the male fails to successfully communicate with her. The female of this species is more likely to eat her suitor, more so than the black widow maker. Okay, what I think I have here is a male six-spotted fishing spider approaching a large female six-spotted fishing spider. Oh, yep, yep, and she said, back off, dude, back off. Let's see what happens here. The female now knows that there's a male suitor pursuing her, and so she drums on the water surface with her pedipalps. The male feels the vibrations on the water surface, and then he can respond, and the mating courtship is on. She continues to drum with her pedipalps, telling him it's okay to proceed. And then he begins his own tapping on the water and producing his own vibrations in response to the female's response. As things continue to heat up, 
The male may actually jerk his body and move more of his legs around, waving them in the air in hopes that she'll spot that and approach him. But whether it's because he's not aggressive enough and is just sitting here, or because he didn't bring her a caught fly as a gift for her, she turns to some other things and decides some grooming is in order. These courtship behaviors can go on from 20 to 30 minutes or longer. So the boy decides to step up his game plan and see if he can entice her to come his direction. The young bachelor is making his approach again. After mating and fertilization, Females spin a silk sack to carry their eggs in, and they carry the egg sack around in their front jaws until just before the eggs hatch. He made an approach, but it all happened so quick I can't figure out if he ducked under the water or she grabbed him for a meal. This male is moving on. I'm going to see if I can catch her this time, but I'm going to try a net instead of a container. She's just too onto my location. I don't feel like hanging around for another half hour. Okay, going in. Got these two right here at home. Um, a nice, nice water habitat for them, where I can feed them and film them up close. They seem to be have adjusted to it quite, quite nicely. So we'll see if uh, they'll, they'll let me uh, maybe uh, handle one or both of them. Um, we'll try with the male first, because the female, well, they're both pretty skittish. The, the male seems to be a little more skittish than the female, so we'll try him first. Hey, how about a little touch on the leg here? Yeah, yeah, there's somebody here, so just seeing if you'll uh, accept my touching or not. Not too bad, not too bad about this leg. There you go. Now I bet if I made a cough, that would send him scurrying. Let's see how that works. <coughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that sent the male scurrying. Also sent the female scurrying over here. But neither had it underwater, so that's not too bad. All right, let's even get one of you out. There you go. You're 
Pretty cool spider, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> you want to get back in the water? There you go. There you go. Right there in the water. Don't kick too close to that female. She might decide. She might decide you look like a good piece of lunch. Mm -hmm.